Well, you found me. Here I am. You found Jared Bear. How you guys doing? My name is Jared Fuller. Today is Sunday, August 30th, 2020. It's the last Sunday in the month of August. Joining me off camera this week, again, Dad and Amy. Hi. And I'm going to try to get this out of the way. Uh, there's a lot going on. A lot happened uh, this past week, and I'm going to try to get to the rundown of that as quickly and as briefly as possible. I just want to get this video recorded and edited and just uploaded so that way y'all can listen to what I have to say. But anyway, it has been a week of drama and nonsense and, I don't know, just bullshit. Uh, and I'm going to get to that. So what I, what I first of all, drama with my neighbors, um, because I was... Home alone yesterday. Dad and Amy went out to the Owasso Speedway to watch my cousin race. And so I had the house all to myself yesterday afternoon. It was nice. Um, ma a good majority of the afternoon and evening I had the house all to myself. And it was nice. I, I enjoyed the alone time. But then I get a knock on the door, and it's like, who, who the hell is that? You know, what's going on with that? Lo and behold, it's my neighbor. And it's like, okay, what's going on? Oh, well... Uh, there's a couple of cops down at my at at my husband's house. He's already got a girlfriend down there. And when I tried to go there to get my stuff, he told me he was going to get me for trespassing. And I kind of stepped outside and I said, "Oh, really?" And I walked out to the end of my driveway. I didn't see anything. I didn't see any cops, of course, because they were in the yard. Actually, Dad called me prior to all this happening and said, "Hey, I would avoid." You know, the corner down there because there's a, there's Saginaw Sheriff's down at the corner, which I didn't see any cop cars. I think they were just on his property down there. Oh, okay. And, um, but she, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm filing for divorce. So then file for divorce. Why are you telling me? You know, um, I don't know how I, uh, they, I don't know, they, they dragged me into the middle of this. I really, I really want to just walk out of it because I'm sick of, hearing about it all the time, but it's like, please, I'm having a good day, I'm by myself, I got the, the entire day to myself, so that's kind of the incentive when you guys go to the racetrack, yeah. Yeah, we might, we might because I'm by myself, and if I want to get up and leave, I'll leave, um, because now I have my own car, and well. I could have left, <laughs> but I didn't, I had the house to myself, doesn't happen very often, the TV was off, music was off, it was nice just to have the peace and quiet until I get a at my door, and it's my neighbor. Oh yeah, we're you know cops are down there. And I'm trying to get my stuff, but he won't let me because he says he'll get me for trespassing. And it's like, uh, okay, so what are you telling me? Uh, why why are you why are you informing me of what's going on at your house? I don't care what's going on at your house. I only care about what's going on here. And they were just as they were getting ready to leave. She backed out like she was going to go that way, wow. past his house. And um, she had her brother with him. And she says, no, don't go this way. Don't antagonize, you know. Oh, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. She went by there anyway. So um, if you're going to antagonize and if you're going to make a bad situation worse, he, he, yeah, keep the child out of it. More importantly, keep me the fuck out of it. Don't come down here and say, well, there, there's there's police at my house. What the fuck do I care if there's police at your house? It has nothing to do with me. I saw the cops go by my house. There were two Saginaw sheriffs. The first car went through, and then it was one of those blazers yeah. that went through. Yeah. The one was a sheriff. They both were. Yeah. yeah. Cops yeah, I didn't see any Chestnut cop no. unless unless they went the other way mm -hmm. because it was the Saginaw Sheriff was wow. the first regular car, yeah. and then the second Saginaw Sheriff was a Blazer. Yeah, yeah. The Blazer might have come from this way, and the Sheriff come from this way. Because they both went by the house. The black and white Sheriff with a star on it. Yeah. That's the Sheriff. <laughs> And then Damien says it's sitting right on Hemlock and Baldwin. 
facing this way. Yeah, he called yeah. us. Maybe, maybe they were, and I just wasn't aware. And then when they, you know, what by the by the time yeah, yeah, and by the time they got down here, they were probably already on the property yeah. and the premises. That was the, uh, <sighs> when you said the blazer went through. Yeah, the little car, then the blazer. Yeah, the little car is the one that was sitting down here on the corner. That's yeah. why Dad called you. Yeah. And asked you to stay away. Yeah. But I mean, I don't mind being friends with them, but. I, I don't want to be friends with him. She texts me last night and says, well, I don't know who to trust anymore. I don't. Have you been talking to him? Are you fucking kidding me? We're at each other's throats. I'm not going to talk to him. He wants to beat your ass. Yeah, he wants to beat me up. He wants to beat me up. Um, you know where I live, dude. I'll leave the porch light on so you don't trip over your ego. Um, but that's enough of that drama because I'm sick of it. The only time I ever hear from, from any of them is when it has to do with the neighbor. I don't care. Talk to me about the weather. Talk to me about your, about your little girl. Talk to me about, yeah, I know, but talk to me about things other than him. If you want to talk about, talk about a sunset or talk about a storm, talk about anything but that motherfucker. Leave me out of it. I'm not involved in your marital infidelity issues. Yeah. So, please, just... Yeah. So that's that drama. And something I was uh, made aware this week, or last week, I should say. I was I was made aware in Messenger. Um, remember... Let's talk about Mel Tyson last week. Yeah. I guess he made a post where, and I don't have it in front of me, but so I'm just going to paraphrase, something to the tune of, well, there's a guy on Facebook. I had to postpone my trip to Tulsa because there's a guy on, on YouTube, not Facebook. There's a guy on YouTube who's making death threats. So let, let, me, let me just point and state for the record that if he's referring to me, I don't make death threats to anybody. Um, that's why my videos are, you know, public for public inspection for people from all over the world to watch and listen to. Um, if he's referring to me, uh, I, I've never made a death threat. I just haven't. And I wouldn't, I don't know where he got that from, but I think what it is is he's trying to deflect the fact that so many people are on to him, we have evidence exposing him for the kind of creep that he is, and still to this day, there's people who defend him and praise him, and they, uh, you know, lionize him and make him look like he's some kind of a god, you know, and I'm honestly getting sick of it. That's really why I made the video detailing and outlining the things that he said on a podcast. So, uh, no, no threat, no death threats have been made, not on this channel, maybe someone else, maybe some other guy who found out the truth about him, made a, a, a YouTube video and made a death threat towards him. But I can assure you, it wasn't me. That's why I also have witnesses, or at least I try to have witnesses for my Sunday video updates when they want to be involved in the Sunday video updates. Um, but that's why the videos are made public, because you can listen to them from anywhere in the world. You can uh, make your own determination. You can draw your own conclusions, kind of, kind of, sort of, maybe. But um, I have never threatened to kill him. I just want him removed from the childhood cancer world because he is a cancer in and of itself. He needs to go away. He needs to be put in prison. That's what needs to happen. Um, like most predators, they should be locked up. Um, I mean, you know, someone someone had actually pointed out to me that because they asked for evidence, and I just had the sound clip to the podcast that he did, the Naughty Show, and they asked me to send um, the the what he was saying, the the you know the key points of what he was saying on the podcast. And, well, 
he, he was kicked out of a homeless shelter for sexually harassing who, though? Were they women or children? Well, first of all, that's irrelevant because it's still the fact that he sexually harassed somebody and he got kicked out for it. Secondly, we don't know the age of the victim that he sexually harassed, which should raise a second red flag and it should make you even more concerned. Why hasn't that concerned you? You know, um, it's, it's, people can't see the forest for the trees. They're defending a predator. If you support Fam or Milk Tyson, you are supporting and praising a sexual predator and just a scam artist, a con artist. The word con and con artist is short for confidence because they can get you to believe anything that is similar to something you've already seen, and they can make you believe shit that's actually not true. And they can get you. They hold you over a barrel. That's the, uh, the, the um, origins of the phrase con artist, because con being the first three letters in the word confidence. So um, that's, that's the way it is, guys. Um, if you want to continue to praise and defend a sexual predator, you can remove yourself from my life, and I'll be much happier without you. And prior to hitting that record button, um, I, because I was out in the kitchen making a pot of coffee, I could hear Dad and Amy converse about potentially my neighbor and I getting together, which I don't see happening in the future. I don't, I don't know if that would would ever happen. But I could overhear Dad say, "You know, Jared kind of likes to be by himself anyway," which I do. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. I, I like being single and and child free. You know. Or I, I wouldn't call it childless because childless makes it sound like I have some uh, uh, disease that is in search of a desperate cure. Um, no, I'm happy and I'm doing things I want to do, or at least I try to be happy for most of the time. Um, but I'm I'm always usually by myself. If I'm not with Dad, I'm by myself doing my own thing. Um, which I always have. I've, I've always been a loner. I've always kept to myself. Um, yeah, whatever, you know, it's, it's who I am. It's what I like to do. I like to be by myself and I like to kind of do my own thing. Um, moving on. Hurricane Laura had made landfall in Lake Charles, Louisiana, which really, really, really had me on high alert for my friends in Louisiana because I know a lot of people in, in Louisiana and, of course, Texas, but Louisiana had taken the brunt of the damage, and, and um, it, it's it's like someone let a bomb off down there, and, and it's just it's a mess everywhere. I think four people are dead as a result of Hurricane Laura. Um, the, the dollar amount on damages is, I, I don't even have a number, Um but it's the worst that they've seen. It's the strongest that they've seen in 164 years, in over a century. Um, and I, when I saw the hurricane was making landfall at Lake Charles, my friends live closer to Baton Rouge than Lake Charles, and so I texted them. I said, "Are you guys okay? Are you guys okay?" And they said, "Yeah, you know, we're just getting a lot of rain and a lot of wind and." Don't worry about us. We're good. Well, don't tell me don't worry because then I'm going to worry more, you know. Um, but they were, in a, they were in a good spot where all they had was wind and, and a lot of rain. Um, because, like I said, they live closer to Baton Rouge. They live in a suburb of Baton Rouge. So, but to the people in Lake Charles, Louisiana, I, um, wow, my, my heart goes out to you. I'm sorry that... Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't know what I would be sorry for. It's nature, um, but I'm sorry that you lost your property. I guess I'm sorry that you have su sustained damages from a natural disaster. But in the same, on, on the same token, but on the opposite side of that, this is something I wanted to point out. If you have been ordered to evacuate your home and you choose to stay, that's on you. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel bad for the people who died. Well, 
make, make no mistake. I feel awful about that. That's, that's horrible. It's heartbreaking. But listen, they, they execute evacuation orders for a reason, which means that you are in immediate danger. You're about to be hammered with a natural disaster. You need to get the fuck out of there. That's what evacuation orders are, are executed for. So that way you have ample time to pack up your things and leave. If you choose to stay and something happens, that's on you. I had that discussion um, with a friend of mine. She says, well, we were raised to, to ride out the storm. Really? So you were raised to put your own life at risk? That's kind of a stupid excuse to not leave. Um, I don't care if, if, if my mom and dad told me, well, you know what? You were raised to ride out a tornado here in Michigan because we get tornadoes here. We get twisters. That'd be like my mom and dad saying, well, we raised you better than that. You have to stay in your house when there's a tornado coming. Fuck that. If it's a big tornado or even a small tornado, I'm fucking gone. I don't know where I'm going to go because we don't have a storm cellar here. We don't have a basement. So if a tornado hits our house, we're fucked. We have nowhere to go. But I will leave. I will literally just go away somewhere. And I'll, I will find somewhere where I can seek shelter until the storm passes. Um, I'm not going to, I mean, that, that's probably the most obnoxious, most absurd excuse I've ever heard. Well, we were raised to ride out the storm. That's really stupid. Um, Yeah, before before you capsize. <laughs> um, it's it, it's just it, it's a it's a stupid reason to stay, you know. Um, see, yeah, yeah, that means you prepare ahead of time. Like last week was it, yeah, it was on Friday. I think it was yeah. Friday night. We had severe weather come through here, and. We didn't have any tornado watches, but I was reading the reports on the Internet and on the website, the National Weather Service website in Detroit, saying that tornadoes were possible. Even if it is a low chance, it's still a chance. So what we do is, is we prepare. We get flashlights and water and candles and things like that. If need be, I'm sure we have th these things around here somewhere. And if not, we'll buy it. Um, but we always try to stay prepared. We pay attention to weather reports. These guys, for some reason, no offense, I'm not trying to be a dick and I'm not saying this out of condescension, but these guys, I have to show them how to, how to read a weather map because if, if a storm is in Midland, for example, and it's moving southeast, Dad says, oh, it's over here. No, Midland is this way. And it's moving in that direction. And that's what I try to explain. But no offense, but I have to explain because even Amy here, she gets it backwards. She'll look at the map on TV and she'll see the storms coming off Lake Michigan and they're moving east. She has made the mistake a few times where she thought the storms were east already. They were east of us. And I say, no, Amy, the storms are west of us because Lake Michigan is to our west. And they are coming at us from the west to the east. So, and I have had to correct them a few times, but that's, it, it's, when you're looking at a map, okay, when you're looking straight on at a map, up is north, down is south, to the left is west, and to the right is east. So when you're looking at the TV and you see thunderstorms or, or big weather coming off Lake Michigan, which we've been to Lake Michigan, Lake Michigan's to the west. And if they tell you which direction it's moving, is it going northeast, is it going east, or is it going southeast, that's important. Because we live east of Lake Michigan. So if it's moving south, like if, if this is the lake, and a storm is moving, and we live here, like almost due east. If the storm is moving southeast, that means it's going to miss us. If it's moving northeast, 
at a wide enough angle, it's going to miss us. But if it's moving due east, chances are good we're going to get hit with that. I just say if they say we got a good thunderstorm coming, I say okay. If it gets you, it gets you. If it don't, it don't. Well, I mean, well, it's no it's not. It's coming. If we got one coming, it's going to get well, you. No, well, you. <clears throat> no, you don't simply write it off. I mean, if no, if there's a storm, no, if there's a storm somewhere and they tell you which direction it's headed, you're you're assuming that it's already in the direction that it's headed to. When I'm saying no, if it's if it's in Mount Pleasant and it's going east, it hasn't already made it east. It's it's in Mount Pleasant. That's what what they're showing you. If it's moving east. It's going to hit Midland. It's going to hit Bay City. It's going to go out to the Saginaw Bay. Eventually, it's going to hit Huron County. It's going east. But that's, I understand maps. I understand directions and things like that. These guys, I'm working with them on, on that. But not to humiliate them because I'm not trying to humiliate or make fun. But it, it, it can be confusing. I understand that my, my cousins, my cousins, yeah, the weather is what it is. You're right. My cousins even get that confused. I had a cousin who, um, he was supposed to be headed to St. John's. And the directions were head south on 127. He didn't realize he was already in St. John's and he was headed south. And he's like, wait a minute, why do these signs say Lansing? Um, because you were probably in St. John's already and you just didn't know it. And now you're headed to Capital City. Son of a bitch, he says. I gotta turn around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be a good idea. Um, but yeah, directions and, and locations are very, very important. If if they set because we had a, a severe thunderstorm warning on Friday here in Saginaw County, but there was a storm coming out of Gratiot County, which is the county to the west of us. So if the storm is over Ithaca or Ashley or even Alma, for that matter, and they and if the storm is coming east, that's something we have to watch because we're like almost due east from Ashley. And, you know, the highway, M57, is just a mile this way. It's just right here. So if there's thunderstorms coming from Ashley, coming due east, that's something we have to watch. If there's a thunderstorm in Elsie in Clinton County and the storms are moving northeast, well, that's kind of something we have to watch. If there's a storm in Owasso heading due north, well, that's something we kind of have to watch. And, of course, if there's a storm in, in Midland or um, maybe even, I'd say, well, if the storm's in Midland headed south, we'd have to watch that. And if there's a storm in Mount Pleasant, we would have to. Maybe hot, so let me just set it. Yeah. If there's a storm in Mount Pleasant, how did Southeast, it's something we have to watch. But anyway, I've spent too much time talking about that. I'm kind of I'm kind of just beating a dead horse. Thank you. Did you stir this? Yes, I did. Okay, I just wanna, wanted to make sure because it doesn't look stirred. She she brought me a cup of coffee because she's... It, it may be a little weak on milk. Yeah, that's okay. But anyway... I don't know what the week has in store, but what I can tell you is that um, this coming, let's see, Tuesday is the 1st, right? No, I think so. Tuesday is, is September 1st, and I did mention this to them before, prior to even coming onto the video here. So, uh, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, all September long, I'm going to be adding the uh, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month ending at the end of my videos to signify that and I just hope you'll show your support donate to uh, a, a, a trusted reputable organization not fam by the way um, donate to St. Jude donate to Children's Miracle Network donate to any any well-known organization don't you know don't give to fam because if you if you if you support FAM and if you donate to FAM, you're donating and supporting a sexual predator. But anyway, make it known that you support Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. If you're on social media, you know, 
share a gold ribbon. I mean, you can go on Google, you can find gold ribbon designs for Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, save it, and post it to your social media. Say, you know, I support Childhood Cancer Awareness Month because awareness is essential. Um, awareness leads to um, research. Research leads to funding, or is it the other way around? Awareness, how do they say that? Awareness leads to funding. Funding leads to research. Research leads to a cure. That's what it is. Um, there's something to that effect anyway. Maybe I got it wrong. But September is Child of Cancer Awareness Month. I'm aware every day of my life. I've been aware every single day of my life for the past 31 years. Dad here has been aware since the day he got the call at work uh, back in 1989. Um, and I've been Jerry Bear since my two little feet touched the floors at Sparrow Hospital. So the name Jerry Bear is, is just, it's derived from being a, a child of cancer survivor. That's all it is. I've been Jerry Bear ever since, um, ever since I was at Sparrow battling cancer. So, um, it's not an online persona because most of you would easily say that, oh, it's just an online persona. It's just, no, actually it's not. That That's my nickname. It's been my nickname for over 30 years now. Um, everybody calls me Jerry Bear, most everybody. <clears throat> Dad doesn't call me Jerry Bear anymore. He used to call me Scotty Waddy because my middle name's Scott. Like everybody calls me Wayno. Yeah, everybody calls Dad Wayno. But... My my nickname has always been Jerry Bear for for years three th three decades. No, since I got Jared Bear. Since since my little two little feet touched the, the hallways at Sparrow, I became Jerry Bear. Um, so yeah, September Child Cancer Awareness Month. Please show your support. Donate to a worthy cause, a reputable organization. Um, Personally, I would just rather check them out. I, yeah, check them out first. Do your homework. Find out who the CEOs of these nonprofit organizations are. It's not a lot of work to look into things like that. And I, I've warned you about Milk Tyson, but you also have to be aware of people who are using your kids to make themselves look good, to present an image for themselves. So, you know, because there's a lot of this, this systematic ego stroking going on where – there's contests on, on Facebook where, well, post a picture of of your mask with my little catchphrase, my little punchline on the mask, and you could win a hundred dollars or you could win a lifetime. You know what? None of that fucking matters. That's systematic ego stroking. Um, just support if if you're really and truly going to support a worthy cause, do it. For the in uh, honor and sake of your child, if you are a parent of a child battling cancer, or if you're just someone who is aware of childhood cancer, which I have lots of friends who are aware of childhood cancer and they're not directly impacted, and they make contributions to nonprofit organizations and things like that, which I've met a lot of people, um, indirectly affected people in the through the childhood cancer world, but I've met many more who are directly affected, and I continue to speak to them even to this day. So give the the light of day to trusted, reputable organizations and not people like Milk Tyson and Fighting All Monsters because he's just a con artist and a sexual predator, and he's demonstrated that that's who and what he is. Um, and last week I pointed out um, that I received a, 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 it was a screenshot in Messenger that I received that um, – Milk was sexually grooming a little girl, and I'm not going to give her name because I want to protect the little girl and, and her identity. And, and, you know, she's a minor, and I, I don't want to put that out there. But I received a screenshot that, that Milk was sexually grooming this little girl, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation showed up at their house. Now, I don't think that's I, – I, I actually, I don't, I don't want to say that I don't think that's true because I don't have – proper documentation or official documentation from the Federal Bureau of Investigation to confirm this. I have no evidence. I have no way of saying if this claim is true or it's not true, so I'm neutral. I'm not going to 
say it's true if it's not true, and I don't want to say it's not true if it is. So, um, but what I am saying is that I'm aware of the claim, um, and it's something that I have had taken into very deep consideration because you know we're talking about the sexual nature, uh, or the, the sexual exploitation of a child, which is wrong. Um, and they they went on in the it's a screenshot of a post. They went on the post saying that Milk Tyson is a was deemed as a child sexual predator and all this and that and the other. That's not me saying that. That is the post. That is what was written in the post. Um, and you can easily find that on Facebook. I'm sure it's it's somewhere uh, to be found. Probably on the uh, Milk Tyson's uh, childhood cancer celebrity and con artist Facebook page, if I had to guess. Um, but that's what's going on. And like I said, I, I'm not saying it's true, but I'm just saying that I'm I'm aware of that claim. And I have not seen any additional official paperwork, which would be evidence from the FBI saying that this is, in fact, the case. Because it could be where, you know, because a little girl's a minor, they can't release that information publicly. They can't make it, you know, they don't put it out there for public record. But, so that's why I'm a bit skeptical on believing that claim or, or even accepting it as, you know, because I don't know. There's no additional evidence that would confirm that. So I, I'm just, I think I'm doing the right thing here, and I'm not taking it a, as true. I'm saying I need more evidence. I need more of, like, paperwork, or someone needs to message me some proper documentation to back up this claim. And that's where I stand. But please just be careful when you're investigating and, and do you know, Looking into people, um, I mean, I can tell you that I'm a good guy, which I am, and these two here will verify that I am a good person. But if you if you still have questions or doubts about me, here's an idea: you can email me, and my email address is in the About tab section of my YouTube channel. Don't be afraid to reach out to me and say, "Well, you know, I I saw this or I heard this. Can can we?" talk about that can you elaborate a little bit yes I can um, because never I, I don't want to say I don't want to make a claim that that I didn't say this I didn't because it, it would be it would be hard for me to prove that I didn't so what I'm trying to do I'm trying to play it safely and I'm trying to be smart about this I'm telling the people who are making the claims which I've been saying for years you're making a claim you need evidence to confirm and substantiate the claim against me, which hasn't happened yet. Because if, if that were actually the case, I wouldn't be sitting here. I would be walking out with my hands behind my back in handcuffs. So um, just something to think about. But before you email me and, and keep it civil, because if you're going to be a dick in an email, I can throw it right back. So, be forewarned. But anyway, I've rambled here a little bit. Dad, Amy, what's happening? How was your week? Good. Mine was good. Holy shit, I've been here for over a half hour already. You had a good week? Yeah, mine was all right. Busy, but it was good. Cool. Yeah. So, did you have fun at the racetrack last night? I had a ball. I had a ball. You should have seen all the accidents. There were no Damien, fighting? Damien coming? Um, almost. Damien? See, that's why I don't go out. One of the reasons. In the pit, out of twenty-some cars, Damien came in sixth place. Damien came in sixth place. That's good. Yeah, he did real good. Then I was proud of him. That's good. Because he was pushing it. That's good. Congratulations, Dame. Um, yeah, he was pushing it. I haven't been. I haven't been to the Owasso Speedway in years. Oh. Um, and. And. I get to drive the car. The last race. You get to drive the car. Yeah, last race. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be cool. My dad is, uh, what's his name? N Paul Newman. Although you don't make salad dressing, but <laughs> you might be a good race car driver. Yeah. Um, oh, sounds like a date to me. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, 
I, like I just said, there was a 12 year old kid with racing last night. And one. And he won. Mm. Oh, it was a boy. Because mm -hmm. you said he won. Sorry, Dean. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You said I thought you said there was a girl out there. Yeah, yeah there was. He, he, he had got wiped out, but um, the girl in the car. Was it a young girl or like an older girl or young? Young girl. She's probably 13, 14. Well, there you go, Dame. <laughs> Adam's car got wiped out last night. Broke the whole front end off it. Oh, is he mad? But <laughs> it, it, uh, honestly, Jared, Damien is. Not really into the girls. He's not really interested in the girls. Smart boy. He's Smart. Not, he's not really interested in anything but racing. racing. Smart. Smart. He says, my mind is set on racing. Good for him. Good for him. I'm proud of him. And before you know it, race. we may have more family members out there. I've been there every race. Knowledge. Every race I've been there for Damien. Yeah, I'm not into racing. I I haven't been to the Owasso Speedway in in years. It's cold last um, night. It's yeah. It, it got chilly last night. We've got Natricia that wants to race. That's Damien's sister. Next year, we've got Dad Elwood that's going to race next year. It's going to get expensive on Elwood if he's got two kids going to wanting to be racing out there. It's going to get expensive. He'll have three. It'll be me, Damien. Oh, Anthony wants to race. Oh, me, Damien, Ethan and Elwood. Yeah, uh, well, Ethan's got to grow up a little he bit first, but. Everyone says Anthony could be out there, but racing is just. Anthony goes backwards. And uh, racing. Racing's just not my thing. Demolition Derby would be good for him. I haven't been to the Owasso Speedway in years, and it's partly to do because of the drunken assholes who fight and, and every week. And there's no shade. No, no owners of it. He's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's no shade out there, and I'm I can't be in the sun for a that long might time. That might change. That might change. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So if you are the owner of the Owasso Speedway, listening to this, you need some shade, because people don't want to cook while they're watching cars endlessly drive in circles. Yeah, it's it's predictably predictably they're gonna make a right turn. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait, wait for it. They're gonna make a right turn. Just watch, just watch. Oh, there they go. Oh, I wonder what's gonna happen next. Gee, oh, another right turn. The only reason why they make a right turn, Jared, is go back into the pits. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or if they hit the wall, going. Because right. don't don't they go this way or do they go this way? They go this way. Yep. So when they go back in the pits, they make a right. Go down into the pits. They come out. Yeah. Pits going do they still have the like the stoplight? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I remember that. It's been oh, years right. since it's been. Yeah. <clears throat> they still got the stoplight. One car last night. Two on this side, come around like this one. Oh, hit him, huh? Right they went, the went off into the field. Oh. And everybody's like, um, where'd he go? <laughs> oh, ten minutes later, oh, here he comes. Guess we don't need the records or anything out there. Yeah. It's just racing. Racing's just not my thing. I just never, I never liked it. I mean, I would go just, you know, just for something to do, just to get out of the house. And I was what, maybe fourteen, fifteen, young kid. I was young. I was younger. We may have. I, I. It, well, the cars are loud, yep. really screaming loud. I don't, know. I don't know either. But anyway, I haven't been to the Owasso Speedway in, in wow, uh, I said 14. Maybe it was a little earlier. Than, maybe it was a little later than that. Probably like late teen, maybe, yeah. like late teens. Oh, and now they've got um, fencing. In front of the bleachers, yeah, that they didn't have before. Hmm. Now they got them so when them cars come up. So kind of like, wow. kind of like NASCAR, where they got the yeah. big fence up. Yeah. In front of the stands. Those, yeah. Yeah, but those cars go a lot faster than these cars. Yeah. NASCAR is actually a big deal, or the Indy yeah, 500, real, big real fast, business. Real fast cars, Jared. Yeah. The real fast ones. Yeah. Well, they had a little car there. Mm -hmm. That was running 18 around 
going around the track for time time trials. Yeah. He was running 18. He was running as fast as those super modified cars. Yeah. Huh. That car was screaming. He held the track so good, and that's one at one. And we had tires blowing out. And that was a neon. Me, I would just, I, I would assume just drive somewhere. I, I don't care about racing. I would just assume be the person who gets in my car and goes away somewhere, yeah, goes on a joyride. That's my thing. A lot of them are um, going, like, I think Damien's going to go automatic. Next next, go next month. Automatic. Next month. Oh, um, and on Friday? Yeah. Damien may be going on a dirt track. Okay. That he's never been on before. Next month, I was going to say next month, if I can afford it. Auburn. Okay, next month, if I can afford it, I would like to go out to Lake Michigan again. Yeah. If I've got the money. After I pay my bills, and we got property taxes coming up yeah, due in September. I would like to make a trip out to Lake Michigan, but I want to I wanna try to get a sunset picture at the lake where the sun is just sinking beneath the horizon and it reflects in the sky and the water sparkles, that would be probably the the grandest sunset ever, just to see the water. Just to see the sun set over the water. I, that would be just beautiful. So I'm going to try to accomplish that next month. Sometime if I can afford it. Yeah. Down there by Lansing? No, no, not Lansing, Muskegon. Oh, okay. Lake Michigan. Oh, okay. <laughs> we we went around <laughs> Lansing to get to Muskegon. You're you're partially right. We went around Lansing to get there, but Oh, okay. But no, Muskegon, um like I've been to Grand Haven, it's a shoreline community, um just off Lake Michigan. It's beautiful down there. I it, the, the west side of the state, especially along the Lake Michigan shoreline, is gorgeous. Um, but I, I, Muskegon is kind of my go-to place because it's there's a lot of beachfront property, and you just pull in and park, and you got the sand, and then you got the lake. And it just looks like it goes on forever and ever and ever, when really it, de it dead ends at Wisconsin. And it just goes on and on and on forever. Well, you've been there. Yeah. So you're seeing, like, it looks endless, like it's just yeah. continuously... And all you see is just a line yep. going across the horizon. It's all water. But Yeah, I got splashed the right time. Yeah, I remember that. The the wave, the, the tidal wave came up or whatever, and it rushed against the <coughs> the wall. Yeah, the rocks and whew, got her soaked. Got her drenched. I was too close. And that's when I still had my Chrysler. And he was like, oh, I don't know if I can get in your van because it's going to get your seat all wet. It dries. I'm not worried about it. I did that to Dad's truck, too, when we were at Reed Park. Yeah. It's like, um, do you want me to but, jump in with my suit or do you want me to change it? Well, now, and now I've got this, this Mercury Monterey where I have leather seats where they're easier to clean. Right. So I, I like that. I like that idea. But there, there's... There's some things I'd like to do. I, I was hoping I could have went back up to Iron Mountain, up to my friend's house. I consider him family. Um, but with everything going on with the, the COVID pandemic and all this shit, I don't know what their plans are, and I don't want to intrude. I don't want to show up. and. Or if they don't want you there because of the COVID. Yeah, that, that could be too. Yeah. Um, and I respect their wishes, you know. I, I totally and completely respect anybody's wishes. If you don't want me to come visit, that's fine. I, I'm cool with that. I don't want to push my welcome because uh, I have that on my conscience. Well, I'm kind of trying to force my way into someone's house and someone's life, and I don't want to do that. Um, but I keep in touch with, with a lot of my, still a lot of people. Um, you got to shut the door because you're, Giving off a lot of light. Thank you. I think he forgets that sometimes. He, he wants you to look like you're up in the sky, I guess. Yeah, I'm flying TWA. Yeah. But I, I, there's still a lot of people, a lot of friends I talk to. Um, they think the same way I do. I know you got a friend up in. I got lots of friends. New York, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, my so my friends in New York are wanting me to come back, like, really, really, really bad. Um, because my little buddy, uh, he's a Wilms tumor survivor, and when I was there the last time, the first time, he literally started bawling because I had to leave. I had to come back home to Michigan. And I was standing, I remember, because I was in their apartment, and I was standing, like, midway between the living room and the kitchen because there's no dining room and I just kind of stood there and little guy the little boy starts bawling his eyes out and his mom and dad couldn't figure out well what what what's going on with you why are you so upset and I said I, th I think I know what's going on here you know may I uh, intervene or elaborate sure go ahead I said you don't want me to go back home do you no. And so I had to get down like on my knees to his eye level. And I said, come here, Bubby. I said, cry it out. Come on, put your head on my shoulder and cry it out. And I had to talk to him and made me cry a little bit. You know, I got emotional. I said, I said, I'm coming back for you. I said, this isn't goodbye. I'm going to be back. Well, we, we still got video chatting and all that other cool stuff. He says, but it's not the same. I want you here with me, you know. And it's like, wow, am I loved or am I loved? He, he wants you to be. He wants me. He, he he wants me to physically be there with him, which is it's cute. I I just I, I'll see what I can do. I can't make promises or anything, but I'll see what I can do with the COVID pandemic. As I point out, I, I don't know how that's even working out. I think they have it to where it's every other seat. Like, yeah. there, there are certain seats you can't sit. I, I, I think Delta's doing it like this, where it's every other seat. Because yeah. I only fly with Delta. So, like they'll have one and then yeah, one and then the and next then one. The next one. Um, and I always, try to, I always try to get window seats because it's kind of cool. When you're 40,000 40, feet in the air and you're kind of looking out and you got the wing of the plane right there and you're just seeing all the clouds and all the, like, the properties and the roads cutting through the fields. And it's like... Hell to the yes. This is awesome shit. But it's it's kind of Twilight Zone and you see that abominable snowman standing out on the yeah. wing. You've never been on a plane, you've never been on a train. You've yeah. never you, you will not eat green green eggs and ham either, yeah. will you? No. She does not like them, Sam I am, huh? You have been in an automobile. Yes, I have. Plane, I've been, I've been on all three, planes, trains, and automobiles. I've never been on a train, but I've been uh, yes, on a train. Yes, you have. Yeah, I have. Yes, you have. Remember when I was a kid, a we went on a field trip to Crossroads Village. Yep, I remember that. Um, Huckleberry Arrow, which is in Mount Morris. Mm -hmm. This was years ago, well, probably a good 30 years ago. And, and we, we were on a train. And they had like little fighting scenes, like in the fields, you know, like when you're in the you, you're on the train and you look out the window and you see people fighting, and the conductor actually tells a story of what what oh, you're looking at. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and it it takes you right through Flint. And I've been so, in a helicopter. I've never been. I've I've stood inside of a helicopter, but I've never been lifted off the ground by a helicopter. Well, I have been. I've never been on a Cessna plane. I've been on a, a an actual. Pushed out of a helicopter. I've actually been on an airline, Delta. I've been on a train, Huckleberry Railroad, and of course I drive a car. I've been on a helicopter. I've been pushed out of a helicopter. The railroad has been so long. I, uh, I think they closed it. Too much. If everybody's ever seen Garfield stuck to the side of the window. <laughs> yeah, with the suction. That's what I look like when they push me out. The of big eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Streaking back to earth. Trying to grab a bird. <laughs> Just, I'm surprised he didn't have a camera on him when he was coming down. Well, it was the 70s. I don't know. Did did they have that stuff back then? Like body cams? No. In the 70s? That that would have been cool to see. Yeah, it would have. No, they that would have been something to... I changed my shorts when I got down that channel. <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you did. Yeah, he, sh he shit his freaking tights. <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah. He shit that uniform. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that would freak me out. I know some people who 
they go skydiving. But see, that, that's that's skydiving. That's just like a hobby or a sport. When you're in the in the military and they tell you push or jump or be pushed, well, Dad says, "Fuck you! I'm not John." Down he goes. And you better hope you find the rip cord. No, it automatically comes out. Oh, it automatically comes yeah, out. Because when I first, you're first doing it, you have to have a shoot on that. It automatically. You well, yeah. Thousands of feet, it automatically pops open. But when it comes open, you go. Yeah, it kind of pulls you back. It just yeah. pulls you right That's back up again. And just jumping out. Ugh, whoa. You That's know, rough. it's like taking off when you're in a Delta plane. Or any plane, really. Oh, but yeah. when when you're in a jet, this was my first experience when I went to New York. Mm-hmm. We were on the runway. Okay, we were just driving around in circles slowly. Okay, no big deal. I can handle that. You know, the plane kind of rocks a little bit. I mean, when you're on a plane and you hit the, the bumps, yeah. then they started picking up speed. It's like... Then you hear that. It's like, what's that? And then I hear the... It's like, oh, shit, here we go. And then when we really take off, it's like, holy, <laughs> you know. And then the next thing, we go straight up, and it's like a rush. It's like, whoa. It's 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 a rush when you first take off. But then when you get up so many feet in the air, and then you look down, it's like, wow. That's pretty cool. Look at the clouds. Yeah. Like well, and I did. When I when I got up, we were like 40,000 feet in the air. But when when I finally relaxed to the point where, okay, I can get my cell phone and I can start taking pictures of the big clouds, you know, like you could almost reach out and touch them, yeah. you know. It like giant and it's like, this is cool. And the sun, you could see the sun off in a distance. Yeah. And it, it would shine up like this. And it would shine on the, on the side of the clouds. It was really pretty. It's like I had never seen anything like this before. And my very first, I, I had a person sit next in the seat next to me. She was an eight, uh, She was Asian. She says, would you like a picture? And she took a picture of me and my Jared Bear because I was going to see my buddy in, in New York at the time. And that, that's something I'm never going to forget. I will remember that for the rest of my life. But... And I've sat next to a lot of good-looking chicks that it's like, oh, I, I, I want I want to I want to put my arm around you. Oh, you're wearing short shorts, you know, and, you know, but that, that's not who I am. Um, but I have sat next to a lot of good-looking chicks on a plane. Um, but uh, that, that's not who I am. I forget where you're going. Yeah, I, I oh, oh, I am on a plane, aren't I? Hmm. I was mesmerized by your beauty and your elegance. I'm sorry. Um, but it, it is a different experience flying on a plane. Um, and I'm not talking a Cessna plane, like the little airplanes that fly. I'm talking a big jet. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, I was on a Delta. Yeah, I've been on a And they tell you before they before they even take off, they, they ru- do a run-through, like they have a safety manual in the seat. Yeah. You know, like... And they tell you to, they show you how to fasten and unfasten your belt, and you have to be fastened before you, you before you even take off. And you have to stay seated at all times unless you go to the bathroom. And uh, the flight attendants, they, they, I made the mistake. I called them a stewardess, um, but that's what they used to call them, stewardess. You know. But yeah, I always I figured they were called stewardesses, and they they laughed. She she laughed at me. She laughed at me. Oh, they don't call us. They haven't called us a stewardess since the seventies. Well, that's not true either. They call them stewardesses in the current day. But well, no, I'm a flight attendant. Okay, whatever. I, I like uh, a, a package of your Biscoff cookies and your cheese crackers and maybe a can of Coke. You know, and it's all free. It's complimentary. Yeah. Um, which is nice, but and they tell you to chew gum so your ears don't pop in the higher altitudes. But it doesn't work, not not always. But when your your ears pop, it doesn't even hurt. It just feels funny, like yeah. it's like ooh, you know. And I that's why when I when I came home and you guys came to Detroit when I went to Louisiana last summer, and you guys went to Detroit in my van to pick me up at the airport at Detroit Metro Airport. Um, it's it. 
I came off the plane, and y'all were there, or Amy, she wouldn't let me in my van because I drove us back home. She wouldn't let me in my van. She held, she hugged me really super tight like I had been gone for for a decade. It's like, Amy, I, I, can we can we go home? You know, like, I, I want to go home. I want to go back to my own room, my own house, my own refrigerator, my own bed, my own TV. I want to go home. And she's just standing there hugging me, embracing me. It's like, okay, Amy, daylight's burning here. Let's go. I want to get out of here. I want to get out of Detroit. I miss you. And we're going too long. So, Dad, I told Dad, I'm driving home because I know how to get home. I know how to get the fuck out of here. So, sure enough, we did. And I took a different way back home, but we made it home. Once I quit hugging you forever. (laughs) But it... It's all around. It's it's a it's an awesome experience flying on a plane. It's just really cool. It's a rush at first, and it kind of gets your adrenaline going. Those but planes, planes you know, and and honestly, it was too quiet around here when you those, made those, those planes ain't nothing though. Them Pan Ams and all those other kinds. I of I flew Delta. Try riding an army plane once. I know. Yeah, you want to talk about scared. You're sitting there all of a sudden. Well, I've seen the movie Full Metal Jacket where they're, they're flying the helicopter yeah. over and they're popping off the uh, the, the uh, We're sitting, like, on Viet Cong, right here, I think is what it was called, Viet Cong, or Vietnamese. Sat, like where that wall is, everybody sits on that side, everybody sits on this side. And you hear a bump and all of a sudden you hear, oh, what's that? Oh, yeah. the plane creaking. Well, why is a fucking plane creaking? <laughs> Well, it's it, like even being in a big jet, like a Delta plane, it, it, you hear the... Um, you hear weird noises. You hear lots of creaks and like... Uh, then a lot of times you uh, think you like, hear them. What the fuck? So yeah. Up there in the air and you think you hear them, but it's yeah. not really happening. And then when you hit turbulence, you your when you're in turbulence, when you hit a, a, a turbulence pocket or whatever they were called, and then the whole plane starts shaking, it's like... I always told, told myself, oh, I hope we make it. <laughs> yeah. And they That's and the, the turbulence the turbulence kind of scares me a little bit. Makes you drop. Yeah, it makes me. Uh, it's like, what the hell? But it's turbulence. <clears throat> That's um. Well, you're flying, and all of a sudden you feel the plane drop a little bit. Yeah. His air yeah. Pocket, it kind of it, it drops, drops and then it kind of goes up and then drops a little bit, and goes you up. Go like this to your feet. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Grab your seat. Yeah, what the hell is that? it's like, or, okay. and I feel, pers- I feel bad for the person sitting next to me because I might want to grab them, <laughs> like, save oh, me, <laughs> or I grab their shoulder or their arm, save me, <laughs> oh, wait. yeah, you're okay, you can let go now, yeah, you can, you can quit like squeezing that. my hand, yeah, and you can quit squeezing my hand now, look what you did to my fingers, <laughs> but it's, it's really not so bad, I, I enjoy, it is a good experience. And the thing is, too, I had a fear of flying, but I, I made myself face that fear, and I got over it. Yeah. You know? I Now, now I want to fly everywhere because <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to get used to it. I kind of know the little run. To, the only thing I don't like is when you're at the airport and you have to go, th- you, you, when you're going through TSA. No, TSA. Yeah. Um, it, it, a lot of those officials can be pricks when they want to be. Um, some of them are nice and friendly and cordial, and a lot of them are just assholes. Well, come on, move it along. I got things to do. Uh, excuse you? You have nothing to do but stand here and give people orders. You're not going anywhere for a long time, so just calm your titties, you know. Um, but that's probably the only, And they make you take your shoes off. Huh? They make you take your shoes off, and they, of course, they check your luggage and things like that. The first mistake I had ever made was I, I had taken a long thing of toothpaste, and I wasn't aware that I, I, it's not allowed. You can't take the big things of toothpaste. And she says this isn't allowed. On, but she was nice about it, and she says, "Sir, we're sorry. We we don't allow toothpaste of this quantity on on." aircraft because of the uh you know the so much going on with people terrorists and things like that i said oh man i i honestly i swear to god i didn't know i'm sorry she says would you like to uh wait here and and investigate it or you want us to just toss it i said just throw it away i said i just want to get on my plane and go i want to get on my flight and go 
I said, I, I swear it'll never happen again. I said, I was not aware. And I was wearing my warrior bracelets, and the they were actually thumbing and picking through my warrior bracelets before they'd even let me on plane because I could have had something hidden under my warrior bracelets and they wouldn't have known. There's no way they would have ever known. Um, but I'm not a terrorist. I'm not on the, you know, do not fly list or, or whatever. Um, I'm not on, on a national terrorist watch list or whatever that, whatever that is. I don't even know. But anyway, um, yeah, flying is, is a whole different experience. I almost got on a train to go to New York. I want to see things from 40,000 feet in the air. I want that, that, that rush. I want to see something different in my life. And sure enough, I, I got my money's worth because I'm telling you, when you're 40,000 feet in the air, if you've never flown on a plane, it is a whole different world up there. And when you're 40,000 feet in the air and you're looking down at everything, everything is like this big, <laughs> like little micro machine or monopoly motel and house properties, you know, like the board game. That's kind of what it reminds me of. But you see the landscapes, like the, the, like, the like, like the trees, you know, the, the trees just go on forever and ever and ever. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful when you're up there. And it's like, the uh, is that a person or is that a flea walking on the ground? <laughs> Yeah. Like when when we were flying into Atlanta, when I went to Louisiana last summer, I had a layover in Atlanta, Georgia, and that that's like the biggest airport there is in in the United States because they do like international flying anywhere in the globe. You can fly from Atlanta, Georgia, <coughs> and Atlanta, Georgia is home of Delta. That's where the main Delta Corporation is, is in Atlanta, Georgia. And I was I was on their stopping grounds and you know, Jackson Hurstfield I think it's Hurstfield Jackson Airport is what it's called, or something to that effect anyway. It is a big airport. It makes Detroit look small. Um, but Atlanta is huge. And I was scared that I wasn't gonna make my next flight because I had to go to the to the gate and I had to find, I, I got on this, it's a, like a monorail. They call it the, 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 the plane train, all aboard the plane train, and it talks to you. And it's just like being on a subway. you got to hold the pole, and it goes really super fast, like electromagnetic, you know, you're gone. And, uh, you have to thank the lady that helped us when you first, when you first went to get on your flight, that lady. Yes. Um, because a lady, she, she does, she'll never remember who I am and she'll never know that I have a YouTube channel, but to the lady who directed us in the right direction, because I was, uh, shitting kittens, I was panicking and, and afraid that I wasn't going to make my flight. I wanted to thank that lady for helping us too, because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have ever made it to Louisiana. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Detroit is, is a confusing airport because you got to keep to the left or keep to the right. Or ke Why can't I just drive to the terminal where it says they have it marked Delta? Okay, cool. I fly Delta. Why can't I just drive into the terminal and have someone direct me to where I need to go? And when I ask for help, well, we can't help you. We can't. We don't know where that. Why can't you fucking help me? Are, do you not work here? What the hell? And other people are getting mad and frustrated. And it's like, fuck. I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna miss my flight. You know, I'm gonna lose out on on an opportunity. And I almost didn't make my plane to Louisiana, but I did. I got to meet my family, and uh, I consider my family and. I love him dearly, and, and again, you know, Louisiana had taken a, a beating from Hurricane Laura, and uh, my heart goes out to the to the people of Lake Charles and, and the state of Florida as a whole. Texas, I think Texas, I've only heard Texas picked up rain and wind, like Houston was on the, the western edge of, of Laura, so... I didn't really hear, and I could be wrong, but I didn't hear a lot of damage reports coming out of Houston. It was mainly Lake Charles and, and Cameron, Louisiana, um, 
and I, I you know, my, my heart goes out to the people of Louisiana, especially Lake Charles and and uh, the, the families of the victims, the, the fatalities. Um, my heart goes out to you, and I'm, uh, I'm really sorry that you had to experience that. Um, maybe sorry isn't the right word to use, but my heart goes out to you and, and my warm, genuine, heartfelt condolences to the families of the victims of the hurricane. But I have rambled rambunctiously for the past hour. I got to go. I didn't want to be here for over an hour, but as it turns out, my mouth just doesn't stop flapping. Uh, Dad and Amy, they're out in the kitchen yeah. talking to someone on the phone, or maybe Amy is. I've been here for over an hour. Why didn't you stop me? I know. I was just going to wait for her if she had any final words, if you had any final words. She's on the phone with her, Jared. Hmm? Okay, then we'll skip you this week. So any final words before we go? Yeah. Be safe out there. Take care of your families. Love one another. And the world will go a lot better. Bye. Oh, and, she's coming in. Oh, she's coming in? Sorry I missed a lot of it before, but peace out. Yeah. Take care. Be safe out there with all the viruses and everything coming in. We got the flu. We got the corona. And now they got something that's paralyzing your kids. Really? So, yeah. Something that's paralyzing children. I think it's the shots they're giving the kids. Well. <laughs> Stupid shit. Yeah, it's paralyzing them sometimes from the waist down or Probably sometimes the like, whole body. Like neuropathy. Probably the medicine they're giving them. This is, this is what. That's why I won't get a shot. This is what kills me about the whole situation with uh, remedies for the COVID. It can take scientists or whoever, and, and I'm not shaming scientists. Sci we, scientists are brilliant, amazing people. But why is it that in six months' time, or however many months it had taken for experts or people to come up with remedies for COVID, why can't they find a cure for childhood cancer? You can quickly come up with a remedy for COVID, but for decades, for ages, we have been waiting for a cure for childhood cancer. Are you keeping us perpetually sick so you can turn a profit, or do you really not know how to remedy childhood cancer? They already said that. Just something to think about as we go into the month of September being Childhood Cancer Awareness but Month. Said that that shot don't kill the coronavirus. So then why the fuck get it? Well, that's what they said. It's, it's not doing anything. It's, it's, it's ineffective. Why, why bother with it? Right. Anyway, those are my final thoughts um, about COVID versus Childhood Cancer. Something that's been plaguing us for ages. Nothing gets done. COVID... Out of the blue, oh, well, we got a remedy for that. Well, why not childhood cancer? It's been around for forever. And it's got nothing to do with the moon. I'm talking about medicine. Yeah. I'm talking about modern medicine. Um, we, why can't they find something for cancer? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If it, they, 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 can, they, can, they can come up with a remedy for COVID, which is good, yeah. but childhood cancer has been around for ages, for that's centuries. How do we know that that medicine that they're shooting these kids with isn't something that is, is well, making I'm, them paralyzed? Because they just said on TV that COVID medicine don't work. The shot is not working. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I like to go, I, I'm a bit of a skeptic, and I like to go according to the evidence, what the evidence shows. And that's <clears throat> basically what I'm saying. Yeah. If If we have... If you can, you know, drum up a remedy just like that for COVID. I mean, right here, right now, we have, you know, a cure for this, a cure for that, whatever. Why not childhood cancer? Yep. Something that has been around for ages, for centuries. And, and for some reason or another, we it's almost like, <clears throat> and maybe I, maybe I am, to a, to a degree, a bit of a conspiracy theorist when I say this. It's like they're trying to keep us perpetually sick so they can turn a profit. That sounds like big pharma to me. But there should have long ago been a cure for childhood cancer. Long ago. But 
for COVID? Right here, right now, we have a cure. Really? No, Dad, that's childhood cancer. That's cancer. It's not just childhood cancer, but it's cancer. Now, I had Wilms tumor, yeah, they consider me cured, but that's just one category of childhood cancer. There are other, several other types of cancers plaguing children. Wilms tumor, nephroblastoma, that's just one angle, that's one shade. That's one category of that. What about DIPG? What about... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you don't hear much about that. Because, yeah, diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, DIPG. Look it up, do a Google search, and educate yourselves because there is no cure. There is no, no one survives DIPG, and it mainly affects kids, which, um, you know, we, we live in a democracy where, you know, children come first, but they have a funny fucking way of showing it. Just thought I'd put that out there. Just just as a, a as a segue as, as we open up September in Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. But anyway, guys, I've been here for over an hour. Thank you so much for joining me for another installment of the Sunday Video Update. This this episodic um, thing that I've really enjoyed doing. I'm I'm having fun. I mean, not every week is a good week, and not every day is a good day, but. I make do with what I have and what I'm able to do, and, and some things irritate me and piss me off. They're going to until people recognize the obvious and make changes. It's going to upset me and, until such time as that happens. Um, <clears throat> we need to stop defending known creeps. We need to stop allowing people in their childhood cancer cults we need to put an end to people using children to puff up their own lives and to create this wonderful, amazing, beautiful image of themselves. That All that shit needs to come to an end because the childhood cancer world as it stands right now, you have a bunch of competition and ego stroking. And really, I'm just a guy who survived cancer. And I reach out to families and I say, hey, I, I understand that. I know what you're going through. My family went through that. Let's, let's have a conversation. I know what you're going through. I know how you feel. I know what, what cancer does to, to a, a child's body. 30 years later, I'm still feeling the effects from my treatment. You know? Um, I care more about the person and not the, 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 the superficial whatever it is that's going on in the childhood cancer world. There's always someone who wants to be number one. They have this weird neurotic obsession with being the top dog and everything and what i'm saying is chill the fuck out so on that note i'm gonna let you guys go dad amy are you gonna be here next week yeah yeah you better be because without you i don't know what the fuck to say or what to talk about so y'all better be here with me y'all y'all in, and you all, y'all, better be here next week, too, because we're going to have another wonderful week of conversation, and we're going to have... week goes good, so we ain't got no bad notes on Sundays. Yeah, yeah, for next week, which... Uh, one good thing, Michael. Oh, Michael, yeah, before I go, um, my cousin Michael, who has spina bifida, he, I announced last week he was in the hospital, he was on a, a feeding tube, and he had a trach put in. He made a wonderful recovery. He's, going on, um, he's on the seventh floor. He's on the seventh floor in Lansing. In Lansing. In Lansing at Sparrow. To the ninth floor, they're going to send him home. And if they move him to the ninth floor, they're going to send him home, which is Wonderful. Pretty good. Um, if he's got to have a trach for the rest of his life, or if he's got to have a feeding tube for the rest of his life, yeah. so Michael. be it. He's still Michael. Yeah, so be it. You're yep. still with us. We love you, Michael, yep. and we hope yep. you make a, a wonderful recovery. My cousin Annette, she had a massive stroke. She's making a, She's recovery. Making a recovery, a gradual recovery. So, Annette, yep. we love you. And I didn't mention names last week, but Annette. We, we love you, and, and we hope you make a, a wonderful recovery yeah. yourself. She's in Alma right now. Uh, yeah, they moved her to Alma from, um, she was in Midland, yeah, at MidMichigan Health. 
Then they moved her to a rehab center in Alma. Yeah. Um, rehabilitation hospital. Yeah, rehabilitation hospital, center, whatever you call it. But she's there now. She's in Alma, um, and she's she's making, you know, strides. She's getting back to where she's supposed to be. At least she's not far too far away to where we can't go see her. Yeah. Well, Midland's not far either, but yeah, with the COVID going on, I don't know if they'll. But they're saying you can stand by their bedroom window. Yeah. And talk to them through the window. Yeah. But anyway. That, that's something to think about this week, yeah. an instant care for COVID, but childhood cancer that's been plaguing children for centuries, no funding, no research, no cures. What's up with that shit? Have a good week. Peace out, guys. Take care. See you next Sunday, and we will be in Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Take care.